I'm presenting uh, a project which we uh, did in the RTTC Reinvent the Toilet Challenge called from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation which funded this whole project. It is a cooperation project between EAVAT in Switzerland, EOS, a design office in Austria, and actually the, uh, we did our field work in uh, Uganda at the Makurira University in Kampala uh, in, in cooperation with the University of, um, of Makurira. Uh, you have heard all this morning from, uh, uh, from Dulai what the requirements of this grant were. Was we have to make a toilet, a standalone toilet, in the field with no water, no sewers, no electricity, and it still has to be of a standard of modern, standard of comfort, and it has to be done for five cents per person a day. We approach this in a slightly different way than they wanted from the, uh, uh, from the Gates Foundation, but we thought it would be easier to do it like this. Uh, our principle is that we are doing this on two different scales. We have the family scale, where we have a family toilet shared by two families. This is a principle which has been very uh, effective in Uganda. And then we are transporting the, um, we are transporting feces and urine to a resource recovery plant, which is on the scale of about a thousand people. We set up a logistic system, which I'm not going to discuss here, um, and we set up this toilet, which is like the name said, this is a urine diverting toilet. Um, urine going in front, feces in the back. Actually, it's a normal dry urine separating toilet, the UDDT but it can be flushed. And um, why are we going to that lesson? As uh, we can provide about, I think I'd like to say that I'll have to go back. Um, the toilet itself is flushed and we are recovering the water on site so that we only have to fill the water once and then we are recycling the water and then we have to fill in about a liter or two per day, which can be actually uh, soil water, it doesn't have to be clean water. And with this system, we can provide about six to eight liters of clean water per person a day, assuming that 10 people are using this toilet. And this is of course much more than the feces and urine from one person. We assume that about 5% of the feces and urine will soil the water. And we can then transport the rest, urine and feces, directly to the uh, resource recovery plant. We can also treat the water on site with only a very minimal amount of energy, uh, less than one watt per person. A watt per person is the same as 24 watt hour per person a day. And already now with existing technology at the resource recovery plant, we can produce fertilizer with the energy from feces um, more or less without <coughs> any external energy. And out of this process, we become water, distilled water, for instance, and uh, nutrients. I'm not going to discuss any of the technologies which we are using at the resource recovery plant. Uh, just to say that um, we're not doing this in this project, or we didn't do that in this project, but other people at Airwalk are doing this, and during uh, treatment is a specialty of Airwalk. What you see here is a partial nitrification of the urine produced in our own um, business. Our uh, own office building, we only have urine separating toilets at Airwalk. Most of them are flush toilets, but we also have a single uh, UDDT there. 
And what we are doing there is the preparation for distillation, and we also have the dis distillator now. So for the first time, we are actually producing a concentrated um, uh, during fertilizer on a continuous basis at airlock uh, from the urine produced there. But I'm going back to the water recovery, which is the first thing I'm going to discuss, and afterwards I will show you how this fits into the toilet we have been designing. We're using ultrafiltration for the uh, treatment of, uh, of this water. This water soil just with 5% <coughs> Of, um, of excreta. Ultrafiltration, that's a choice of today for drinking water production because it doesn't let any uh, bacteria or virus through. So it's a really uh, a good gold standard for hygiene. But obviously, we have to go a little smaller. This is from a drinking water production in a central drinking water production in, uh, in Switzerland. And we have scaled this down to fit into a single toilet. This is what you see, the ultrafiltration membrane contained in what we are calling the water recovery wall of this toilet. Um, we then uh, post-treat with electrolysis in order to make sure that uh, we have some production of chlorine so that we will really have very um, uh, very hygienic water for the hand washing, which you see on this picture, for the flushing, and also for the um, anal cleansing for the people who uh, are not using toilet paper. I'll come back to how exactly this toilet functions. We all know that maintenance of ultrafiltration is not an easy thing. When we have a large-scale operation, we know the flux is a function of permeability of the membrane and the pressure. So in a full-scale operation, you put on a high pressure and you have a high flux per membrane unit, and the price you pay is that you have to regularly back flush uh, this membrane with chemicals. Obviously, we cannot do that in a, a small on-site toilet uh, for instance, in, in an informal settlement. So what we do there is that we do not apply any other pressure than gravity, and what we see is that the flux, the flux is getting smaller, but at some time it stabilizes at a very low flux, but it becomes stabilized because the membrane is biologically activated. We have a lot of, of biological activity on this membrane, which keeps it open. So the price you pay is that we need more membrane, but membranes are getting cheaper every day, so that doesn't really matter. It's more important that we don't have to maintain it. Here you see a laser scanning microscopy of, uh, of the biofilm, and you can, we can actually see that it's kept open by this uh, biology, and we have by now had this filter running with uh, wastewater for about uh, nearly a year without ever cleaning the membrane. The principle comes from drinking water production, and we are actually doing exactly the same thing here, but we have to aerate uh, in order to keep the system aerobic. This is what costs a little bit of energy, uh, and also the electrolysis, of course, need a little bit of energy. Here we see the results, how the water looks when it comes in, soil with pieces, then how it looks when it has gone through the membrane. It's still brown, but it's actually safe. It contains some organic matter, so there will be regrowth, and this is what we prevent with electrolysis, and you see the water get, looks again like uh, drinking water. Of course it cannot, it is not drinking water, it will be sorted. Um, we set up a business model together with this, um, uh, in this, with our technology, and the toilet is essentially made as a piece of furniture, so you can put it in any existing superstructure or even, even in a house. 
and it will be emptied two times um, a week. This is the value proposition for the users. It's important that you can rent the toilet because no tenant in an informal settlement will be able to buy uh, a toilet. Um, here we set up the numbers for the business case. I'm not going to go through. The most important thing is that you see at the upper right, we actually have a, um, a profit from this business, even if we keep the fee down at five cents per person a day, as required by the Gates Foundation. Um, and the second thing is that you see what you can gain from the um, fertilizers produced in this system is in the same order of size, of, uh, of size as the uh, operational costs. So there will actually be no reason for dumping anything in a nearby river because then you will not get your operational costs covered. What? This was the phase one of the RTTC program. I just signed the contract for the RTTC phase two this morning. I'm very happy about this. I think there's nobody from the Gates Foundation here, but thank you. Um, what we did was that we made this a very attractive design model, which you will see in a minute. We developed the on-site wash and flush recovery technology. Um, we set up a transport logistic concept based on uh, GIS-based stochastic modeling. I have no time to show this here. Um, we evaluated some treatment technologies and we set up this business model which showed that this is feasible as five, at five cents per person a day. And the next steps is that we are going to implement water recovery technology. We are going to co-creation and test of user acceptance and we are going to develop a prototype um, and have it tested in Kampala together with our colleagues at Macarena. Let's go into what's probably the most interesting thing for you. How does this toilet look? Would you like to buy it? Um, we went to uh, Kampala very early in the process where we already had this design language. You see the two designers at the back. Um, and what came out of this was that people in Uganda, they wanted a squatting pan for uh, a shared toilet for hygienic reasons. Um, we wanted to make it a urine diverting dry toilet, you see this here. And you also see the diverting rim, which allows you actually to have this very important flush to keep the toilet um, clean. We have set up two basic interfaces, or two interfaces. Uh, one is the basic one, which is generally for vipers, and one is the advanced one, which is for washers. The way you see it here, it is uh, by now uh, a bidet. You can use it for washing. And at the minute when you uh, step down the button, it turns into a urine diverting dry toilet. Uh, of course, the basic toilet, you would need a, a lid for it. It's also a, a cost question. You see that the um, more advanced uh, squatting, squatting pan is more complicated from the technology. But actually, it's something which is just rotating, um, a rotating mechanism. Here you see the interface. We have a foot pump, so we can pump of the clean water which we are using in the uh, for flushing. It's uh, pumped up to the water display. You can now see entertainment of this toilet. You can see when you are pumping up just a few steps on the foot pump. Uh, and at the same time without knowing it, you are actually pumping up the soil water of the person who came uh, before in order to have this into the um, the treatment reactor. There's a lot of convenience, the water tap, the soap, the wash bathroom, and also the hand shower for uh, the washers. And last but not least, the flush button. You punch the button and your toilet gets uh, clean again and you hear this uh, important flush. 
The maintenance interface is also important. Uh, you uh, pull this um, handle, and when you do this, you can open the toilet, and you see by pulling the handle, you have closed the, the feces container, so nobody will ever see the feces in there. The urine uh, can be pumped, and we have included the uh, time for servicing this toilet into our business space. The construction scheme, it can all be done by rotational molding. It's only a very few pieces, so it is possible to produce this toilet as a very low cost, and it should be stable enough that it can um, be used for about 10 years, and we assume that it will cost about $500, which ends up in, uh, in these numbers of five cents per person a day, including also the resource recovery plan and the logistics. This can be locally produced, which is very important. And we're now going to evaluate how the design, um, uh, how people will use this design, how we can integrate design and technology. We're working hard on this already now. And the container design development is not finished, but we really want to, to look for the safety of this system. If you want to know more, this is the uh, uh, home page of our diversion uh, toilets. Thanks a lot.